the war in general is uh, is a challenge, certainly for President Biden, with with a number of voters. Um, in particular, it looks like it's a challenge for him with black voters. He's had such strong support in that community. He's one of the reasons that he won last time around. And the reason we say that, or one of the reasons we say that, is because we've been hearing comments from um, the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, the Black Voters Matter Fund, Cliff Albright, on this topic. And he joins us now. Um, Cliff, it's good to see you. That boy, it's so emotional to hear that mother speaking. That's someone that's a military family. I want to go to a tweet that you had to kind of kick off the conversation from a wider perspective on this, where you said um, last week when talking to a reporter about the high percentage of black voters who disapprove of U.S. policy, Gaza and Israel, I mentioned disapproval would increase as the conflict escalates, especially since a disproportionate amount of the ground troops at risk be black and brown. And we know all three of these um, soldiers who were killed were. So you pick up on that, if you can, and what's going on in a community that had supported this president very, very strongly in last time around. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and, and to be clear, you know, in general, our community still supports uh, President Biden, you know, in, in large numbers. But this issue really, perhaps perhaps more than any, really has the potential to to weaken that, that level of support. And as you said, I posted that tweet, um, or I made that comment to the reporter about a week ago. And, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't imagine that it would be just a matter of days before what I predicted would, would come to pass. Black voters are, you know, largely against the president's policies for several reasons. Part of it is because we see a group of, you know, oppressed, um, in some ways colonized uh, people, brown-skinned people who remind us of our own experiences. In some cases, it's because of the camaraderie and the solidarity that Palestinians, as well as other people across the world, showed for black folks during the Black Lives Matter and the, the summer of protests back in 2020. Um, some of it has been because we don't want to see a lot of money going towards um, going overseas in general, but specifically going overseas for what many view to be an, an unjust war. Uh, and then thirdly, you combine those two issues, and, and especially that financial thing, when when people are saying that the cost of living is high, you right. know that you still got black folks who haven't quite recovered as much as the rest of the country. But when you add on top of those two issues, right, the solidarity with Palestinian people, the the issue of the the expense of and the cost of the war, when you add on top of that, that now you may start seeing ground troops. Um, being targeted, or other troops, but particularly ground troops, because historically, black and brown folks, for historic reasons, for economic reasons, for social reasons, make up a disproportionate amount. That's, I believe, part of why you saw that all three of those soldiers um, were black and, and from the South. All three, yeah. Um, you know, there was an article in the New York Times the other day that talked um, about uh, black pastors saying that black pastors are putting pressure on the president to call for a ceasefire. I'll just read a short piece of that where they say black faith leaders are uh, conscious of the risks in pushing Mr. Biden on a ceasefire with uh, Donald Trump looming as the likely Republican nominee. Even pastors who are most critical of Biden on the war in Gaza agreed that a Trump reelection would be the worst case scenario for their largely black and working class congregations. So that brings up the point that she said this has been a supportive community for this president. So even if they are frustrated with him on this issue, on the war, would they be willing to switch their vote to Trump? Would they stay home? How do you see it playing out? Yeah, I mean, you know, what, what we're hearing and seeing and what stands the reason is that those that are upset with the president, anger with the president, at least from the black community about this war, they, they're not under any illusions that, you know, putting Donald Trump in would be much better. You know, black voters are often frustrated, uh, you know, when we voice concerns about, you know, the president's position, whether it's on this issue or voting rights or some other issue, that people's response is, oh, well, what are you going to do? You're going to put Trump in? And no, that's, that's not necessarily the only other option. Right. There's always the option of just staying home. Yeah. And, you know, when folks find themselves just simply unable for their own reasons, and this isn't Cliff Albright talking about the way that I feel. I'm just telling you what black voters are feeling and saying um, that there's a real possibility that some number will say, you know what, I, I definitely can't vote for Trump. I can't bear to vote for President Biden because of this war. I'm just going to sit this one out or um, may consider another third party candidate, somebody who, hmm. you know, like a Cornell West, who has been outright opposed to the war in Gaza, they may decide to do that. And it doesn't have to be a large number, but in some states, say a Michigan or a Georgia, um, those votes on the margin could wind up 
being the difference. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.